Welcome to Optimal Anesthesia, the channel where we delve into the latest advancements and practices in the field of anesthesia. Today, we're exploring a fascinating topic, the difference between chronological age and physiological age, and why this distinction is so crucial for anesthesiologists. Have you ever wondered why some 70-year-olds can run marathons while some 50-year-olds struggle with daily activities? The answer lies in understanding the difference between chronological age and physiological age. In the world of anesthesia, this distinction is more than just interesting, it's essential. Today, we'll discuss why this is the case, how anesthesiologists use these concepts to optimize patient care, and what the future holds for this evolving field. First, let's clarify what we mean by chronological and physiological age. Chronological age is the easy part. It's simply the number of years a person has lived. You calculate it by subtracting the year of birth from the current year. For example, if you were born in 1980, and it's now 2024, your chronological age is 44. Straightforward, right? But this only gives us a baseline. It doesn't tell us much about a person's overall health or how they might respond to anesthesia. Physiological age is where things get more interesting. This concept takes into account a person's biological condition and functional status, providing a deeper understanding of their health. Let's explore the key factors used to determine physiological age. First up, we have the frailty index. This tool assesses physical frailty based on criteria like unintentional weight loss, muscle weakness, and low physical activity. It gives us a snapshot of a patient's functional reserve and their vulnerability to stressors. Next, we look at biological markers. Blood tests for markers such as C-reactive protein CRP, interleukin-6, AL6, hemoglobin A1c, HbA1c, cholesterol levels, and blood pressure provide insights into the body's internal functioning and overall systemic health. Then there are functional status assessments. These include the activities of daily living ADL, and instrumental activities of daily living IADL, scales. These tools measure a patient's ability to perform daily tasks independently, which indicates their overall physical and cognitive health. We also consider comorbidity indices like the Charlson Comorbidity Index. These tools predict long-term mortality based on the presence and severity of comorbid conditions, helping us stratify surgical risk more effectively. Cognitive health is crucial too. Cognitive function tests help us identify patients at risk of postoperative cognitive dysfunction or delirium. This information allows us to tailor anesthetic plans and postoperative care to mitigate these risks. Finally, simple physical tests such as gait speed and grip strength can correlate well with overall physiological health and predict postoperative outcomes. These straightforward assessments provide valuable information about a patient's physical resilience. So, why does this matter? Well, by understanding both chronological and physiological age, anesthesiologists can create more precise and individualized anesthetic plans. For example, a 70-year-old marathon runner might handle anesthesia and surgery better than a 50-year-old with multiple comorbidities. Physiological age provides the context we need to make these important decisions. To summarize, while chronological age gives us a basic idea of a patient's age, it's the physiological age that truly informs us about their health status and how they might respond to anesthesia. By incorporating tools like the frailty index, biological markers, functional status assessments, comorbidity indices, cognitive function tests, and physical tests, we can develop a comprehensive understanding of our patients. In this section, we're discussing the future implications of understanding and utilizing physiological age in anesthesia. 
This exciting topic covers everything from personalized care to technological advancements. Let's dive in. First, let's talk about personalized anesthesia care. The integration of genetic, molecular, and comprehensive health data is paving the way for precision medicine. What does this mean for anesthesiologists? It means using advanced diagnostic tools to accurately assess physiological age, ensuring each patient receives the most appropriate anesthetic care tailored to their unique health profile. Think of it as crafting a bespoke suit, designed just for you. Alongside this, biomarkers and genomics are playing a crucial role. Research into specific biomarkers and genomics is giving us deeper insights into the biological aging process. Biomarkers like telomere length, DNA methylation patterns, and SASP factors help predict how a patient will respond to anesthesia and recover from surgery. This allows for more precise and individualized anesthetic plans. Now, let's move on to technological integration. Wearable devices are becoming more common and they can monitor physiological parameters in real time. Imagine wearing a device that tracks your heart rate, activity levels, and sleep patterns. This continuous data can inform anesthetic management and postoperative care adjustments, making the process smoother and safer. And we can't forget about artificial intelligence. AI and machine learning algorithms can analyze data from various sources to predict physiological age and recommend personalized anesthesia plans. These technologies identify patterns and correlations that might not be evident through traditional analysis, enhancing risk stratification and management. Next up, we have Enhanced Recovery Protocols. Tailored ERAS programs, or Enhanced Recovery After Surgery Protocols, can significantly improve recovery times and reduce complications. These programs include individualized pain management, nutritional support, and early mobilization strategies designed to suit the patient's biological condition. Implementing these protocols requires interdisciplinary care. Collaboration between anesthesiologists, surgeons, physiotherapists, nutritionists, and geriatricians ensures a holistic view of patient care, enhancing outcomes. It's all about teamwork and comprehensive care. Let's not forget the importance of preventive medicine. Promoting lifestyle changes that improve physiological age can have significant long-term benefits. Encouraging regular exercise, healthy eating, and stress management can reduce the need for complex surgical and anesthetic interventions later in life. Early screening for conditions that affect physiological age, such as hypertension, diabetes, and obesity, allows for timely interventions that can improve overall health and surgical outcomes. Prevention is always better than cure. Moving on to research and education. Ongoing research into the determinants of physiological age and its impact on anesthesia will provide new insights and innovations in patient care. This research will help develop new techniques and protocols for managing anesthetic care based on physiological age. Educating healthcare professionals about the importance of physiological age and anesthesia is crucial. Training programs should incorporate the latest research and technologies preparing anesthesiologists to implement these concepts in their practice effectively. That's all for today's episode of Optimal Anesthesia. We hope you found this discussion on chronological and physiological age enlightening. Stay tuned for more episodes where we explore the latest trends and topics in anesthesia. Until next time, stay informed and stay safe.